So let's talk just a little bit about what chronic pain is. When we're talking about chronic pain, we frequently define it in terms of two factors. One, whether or not an acute injury or disease that would be responsible for it in the first instance should have healed. Secondly, we talk about it in terms of the duration of the condition, just how long has it lasted. Not easy to know just when a, an injury or a disease should have healed. Frequently, people will talk about three months, six months is perhaps a more uh, conservative estimate. So if pain has persisted three months or six months, then we're likely to begin to use such labels as persistent pain or chronic pain to describe the condition. Sometimes we're able to identify uh, a continuing injury or a disease that might be responsible for the condition. Uh, arthritis, uh, of course, comes to mind. One also can think in terms of chronic pain that's associated with diseases that aren't going to go away. We think of those as terminal illnesses. Uh, sometimes that's the case with cancer. Sometimes that's a ca the case with the diseases that are associated with HIV or AIDS. Uh, and uh, so we have to deal with them uh, more in terms of palliative care. But the vast majority of people who suffer from chronic pain suffer from what's best described as chronic non-cancer pain or chronic non-malignant pain. That's pain that isn't associated with a progressive disease or a disease that's going to get uh, worse. Often we can identify a specific pathophysiological cause of the chronic pain. That would be the case where there's uh, a continuing inflammation, infection, uh, a bone fracture, or um, other illness of that type. Interestingly, in the majority of people suffering from chronic non-cancer pain or chronic non-malignant pain, we haven't been able to identify a, a, a generator of the pain in tissue pathology. The, the condition is continuing pain and pain-related disability without an adequate uh, definition as to why that should be the case. We usually talk about people suffering from those conditions as suffering from uh, functional pain disorders. That means we can't isolate a source in tissue pathology. Or sometimes it's much more explicit than that. They're described as medically unexplained painful conditions. Now, um, we not only focus upon the biomedical factors that constitute a basis for some conditions, but we become very interested in the psychosocial factors that are associated with these painful conditions. And it's interesting how often we can find important psychosocial factors that should be assessed and should be treated in people suffering from chronic pain. Uh, a particular study comes to mind. It was published in the journal that I edit, Pain Research and Management. The paper was published in 2007 with Angela Melis Gagnon, the director of the Compre Comprehensive Pain Center at Toronto Western Hospital, it's associated with the University of Toronto. In this study, Angela and her colleagues uh, had done a very careful medical and psychological assessment of a large number of patients, better than 1,200. Interestingly, they found that the pain, the magnitude of pain and the magnitude of the pain-related disability were associated with a general medical condition that could account for it and there were no psychological factors of interest in only 25% of these 
this large number of patients. In about 50% of the patients, they were able to identify a medical condition that was important and should be treated at the same time as there also were psychosocial factors that were deserving of healthcare professional attention. That was in 50% of the patients. In as many as 20% of the patients, they were able to identify psychological factors without any biomedical condition that might be responsible for the individual's distress. So interestingly, psychosocial factors were important in fully 70% of the, this large number of patients whom they had seen in this um, pain clinic. Now, we do know that uh, pain clinics of this type in large hospitals, they serve as tertiary referral settings, settings where uh, patients are sent who are particularly problematic. We do know in settings like that, these functional or med medically unexplained conditions are more common, but the very high magnitude of psychosocial factors in these patients supports the argument that it's necessary, important that one should assess for psychosocial factors very early in uh, the delivery of care to people suffering from acute and chronic pain.